Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Uh, Sayyidi, forgive my ignorance, Sayyidi. I have a question as to what is the significance, reality of Imam Hussein's family that witnessed the massacre and had to live with the grief. Walaykum as salam. <coughs> this is their, their darajat and their station. We said, those whom passed away with Imam Hussein, as salam, they passed away and became intercessors. Their number specific, their, their station immense, that they laid their life down for that reality to intercede for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad. And Allah gave to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad immense darajat. What other nations could not achieve? When Sayyidina Ibrahim could not achieve what Allah had asked of him, the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad had immense realities. They laid the foundation that for the people of faith, their, their faith is like holding a hot coal, that they're in continuous difficulty, continuous testing. And not just by saying it for the poor people, but they live for an example of themselves. And that's what we talked the other night. Now everyone says, oh I'm the son of this shaykh, I'm the grandson of this person, I'm, the grand I'm entitled now for everybody to fall down to my feet because I'm entitled to something. And the highest family, the most noble family, the supreme family of Sayyidina Muhammad immediate grandchildren, they didn't have that right and they didn't even live by that example. This, this right that they called of themselves for Ahlul Bayt, that they led by example that we're not here thinking we're entitled to palaces in Baghdad. They came and gave their, their entire blood, sweat and tears for their love of Sayyidina Muhammad and Sayyidina Zainab and any time a woman complains of wearing a hijab or don't want to wear a hijab or doesn't want to follow the deen and things are too, too difficult for the deen, you know that they paraded them and they pulled their hijabs off. They played drums and, and entertainment as they were parading these families. These are the supreme sort of kingdom of God. If there's anything you can understand of the height and unimaginable kingdom of Allah and these are the kings and queens of that kingdom. And when they came upon the earth, shaitan wanted to ridicule them, humiliate them. So anytime you have a beard and you have a turban and you have a hijab, it didn't, it didn't come to you very easy. You just decide if you want to put it on and take it off. But there were other people who were being killed for having that, paraded and humiliated for, for being like that, had to be disgraced in front of people for the sake of that. So they, 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 they serve their purpose that they're for us an example. Every time you think life is difficult for you because you didn't get what you wanted to eat, then they come into our life and say, no we, we, we had a tremendous difficulty. And we are the supreme family, the number one family, the highest family and we were treated the worst on this earth. Because Allah wanted to show them, your kingdom is in heaven not on earth. But now everybody made their kingdom on earth and forgot about the kingdom in heaven. We pray Allah forgive us and dress us from their lights. We can't even begin to live like that but at least by remembering them, meditating on them, thinking about them. Carry your sunnah, carry your religion, carry your belief, it's a flag of honour for what they suffered. So we were paraded and put through difficulty and you don't want to continue our way and nobody's you know beating you, nobody's tied up your hands and dragging you through the street. So no they're a great symbol of our faith and our understanding. We pray that Allah always give us strength and never drop your 
Hussein Salam stood for and fought for, don't drop your, your flag. Don't you dare shave your beard once you have your beard. It's as if you entered into womanhood. All that they stood for and all that they represent, you don't ever leave that. We try our best not to leave that as if we are dying in the field. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, is it, possible, is it possible to go astray after receiving these lights and guidance? Is the fear of losing the spiritual company of awliya and Prophet just a satanic whisper? The fear of, of losing stations that you achieve, is it a satanic whisper? No, it's very real. There's no guarantee for anything. Uh, Prophet described faith and iman is like a, like a shirt, it can get worn out. And that you have to pray continuously to Allah that He renews our faith, gives us more faith, that we continuously look for good deeds that make Allah happy. If somebody felt that they achieved something and it was a locked in guarantee for all your life, my goodness you wouldn't do anything after that. You wouldn't give a dollar after that, you wouldn't struggle, you wouldn't pray, you wouldn't fast, you wouldn't do nothing. You say, I got it and it's finished. And that's the whole concept of Allah's hikmah and wisdom for us is you don't ever know when you got it. And if you think you have it, you struggle all your life to continue with it. That we're always looking for good deeds, always good actions, always trying to challenge ourselves to do more, to do more, to do better, to improve ourselves. That every day asking that Sayyidina Muhammad is he happy with me? Did I improve my faith from today and last week or is, am I going backwards? So no, we're, we're never feeling that we're, we're secure. And we know that, they, that big people can make big mistakes and they can fall from grace. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, you said not to leave the cities but if one wants to live without haram paper money, shouldn't that one get out of the city in order to become autonomous? Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know these talks again, these are a general rule, unless you have a very specific question you can email helpme at nurmuhammad.com. When we gave advice of uh, yeah, everybody leaving the city and you think you're going to be safe when you leave the city, that's a general understanding so that to get people's attention and people to stop and think. Uh, certain things have come to our attention that there are some countrysides in the area that people wanted to go and hang out in those countrysides. And they found out actually there are more dangerous people already had that idea. They ran away from the city because of the crimes they committed and they're hiding in those areas. So you take your family and your little children and sit in the woods, it may not be the most safest thing that you can do. Because you don't know who also is trying to run away from the lights and, and the attention of certain uh, authorities. So you have to be very specific on what type of area you're going to go to. If you want to go to a farm area, a farming area, community, that's something else. But you want to go hide in the woods, well there's probably other people already hiding there. And that can be dangerous. So very specific, you can email and, and give us information, we make du'a for you and istikhara and, and uh, that, that requires a lot more thought versus a general statement is, I'm just going to run from the city and go into the woods. With the pandemic many people ran away from the city and now the people in the woods are throwing them out because they're bringing all their sickness and craziness into the countryside. Sayyidi, can you explain about the light that emanates from the right eye and left eye of awliya? Yeah, it's in the article for the, the two eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad and the book Insana Kamal. That the Insana Kamal book that was put out 
And Sanakaman means the universal being, there's a soul and there's an insan in which Allah created everything within that reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah And every part of that light has an immense reality that the right eye and nur and the left eye the oceans of Al-Hayat that with the nur that comes out that dresses with lights and with the left eye that comes out dresses with the oceans of Al-Hayat to give people back their light and these are heavenly lights and to give people from the oceans of Al-Hayat. And that's the eternal oceans of Hayat and that's why the Dajjal he covers the eye because he wants to give them only the Hayat of dunya and he has no nur at all. And so Allah makes him to give his symbol so that people would understand the symbol because he really can't come and fool people if they understood because Allah wants the believers to always be ahead. So he's a man of deceit but deceiving those who don't study to understand their deen. So Dajjal comes with no light of hayat. Means he doesn't give you anything from the heavens, he only asks for your hayat of dunya that live life as you live forever. And they have expressions that they use about this life you only have once and live it to your best. Yeah, and the light that he has has no light whatsoever and their people pull the light from the hearts of believers. So that's why he symbolizes himself with a bulging eye and the defective eye. But we have all of those online inshaAllah. You go to Nur Muhammad and type in Dajjal, type in reality of eyes and then the articles inshaAllah can appear or you email help me at nurmuhammad.com and uh, the emails and the article links to articles are very detailed from previous talks inshaAllah. So a few people are asking about what they can recite on this uh, holy night. Uh, someone asked, As Salaamu Sayyidi, what can we do to honor Mawlana Shah Naqshband on this special day if we are unable to do charity? Yeah, the salawats, the du'a, what, what do we have on the, the awrad book? They can make the salawats, they can uh, do, do Whatever they want, they can read from our the life of Mawlana Shah Naqshband, connect your heart and to ask to be dressed for Mawlana Shah Naqshband. On the Nur Muhammad website under the golden chain, they have the audio file from the book. So you can listen to the audio file, you can read the article from the life of Mawlana Shah Naqshband, connect your heart. If you can't give food to people on that day, we, we gave out qurbans from the, the center. They have uh, I think 11 qurbans going out that we're, we're done today inshaAllah. Also it's the night of immense blessings and to drink from Zamzam. If anybody has from Zamzam water tonight then inshaAllah to drink with that and asking Allah to dress us from the fountains and the realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshband. And ask Ya Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, dress our lights and our, dress our soul with your lights and your blessings and whatever secret you're pouring into this beloved Zamzam that count us from amongst those. We are weak and we're coming with love and, and love for Sayyidina Muhammad love of Ahlul Bayt, love of Ashab al Nabi love of Awliyaullah fi sammahi wa fi lard inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.